you please be seated? Not you, Susanna, or you, Nikolai. Would you please come and join your beloved and our beloved Dean for a few minutes? I thought for one glorious moment I'd escape. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. Breathe. This one word exhortation, or is it a mantra that many, if not all of us, have heard frequently from Susanna's lips, sums up Dean Susanna's ministry to us in this diocese of Gippsland. Breathe. She has taught us and encouraged us to breathe. To breathe the ample air of God. To breathe in the all-sufficient divine grace. To breathe in the spirit-filled creation around us. As a spiritual director, quiet day leader, retreat conductor and professional supervisor, she has coached individuals and groups in practices that help to centre and ground and focus on the God who is with us and within us and between us. She has done so as a senior Anglican priest through and through. She has done so in ecumenical partnerships and she has done so as one deeply attentive to the wisdoms of our First Nations people. How fitting that the occasion of her diocesan farewell this evening should also be that of the installation of the first Aboriginal priest in this diocese as a canon. And we rejoice with Auntie Phyllis and with Fran and Ian, all who are here supporting you in person or via the live stream. Susanna is a great builder of teams, of community, an enabler of the ministry of others, lay and ordained. She fosters a culture of inclusion and diversity, embodied in the quality of welcome and hospitality that we experience as Gippsland Anglicans whenever we come to St Paul's for a celebration, be it in person or virtually. And Susanna, I calculate that we have recorded over 70 services here or at Bishop's Court together during COVID and I promise that the blooper reel will remain firmly in the vault. <laughs> other, <laughs> other daily ministries from here reach all parts of the region and indeed beyond by that technology. Susanna has served generously and wisely on boards, committees and governing bodies that touch every aspect of our life and work together, including Bishop in Council and its executive, the Abbey Chapter, our vocations panel and diocesan staff. She has been a trusted colleague to me and many others, always ready with a care package or a word in due season, knowing when to challenge and when to soothe, just as her preaching comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. She and Nikolai have a cat named Annie in homage to Susanna's family history going all the way back to Annie Payne and the very origins of this diocese. Annie comes into my office, Annie the cat that is, and eats all the paper on my desk. So if I've not responded to a letter that you have written, that's my excuse. Susanna and Nikolai are themselves a team. They have modelled shared ministry to us and blessed us individually 
and together with their utterly authentic humanity. All going well, as we're sure it will, Nikolai will become Dr. Nikolai just two days before they return to Canberra, having stared down the beast of his PhD. Who knew that through his teaching and preaching, Nietzsche and Girard would become such household names in Sale and Gippsland? <laughs> as an associate priest here, as chaplain to the senior campus of one of our Anglican schools, as a police chaplain, as an EFM mentor, as a charismatic educator with an unself-conscious gravitas, be it on the floor of Synod, a Zoom forum, or at the dinner table. Nikolai has been a seriously good-humoured presence among us for these five and a bit years. Our breathing, Susanna, will be a little more laboured on account of our grief at your leave-taking, a decision which, of course, we understand and support. And yet our breathing will also somehow be more purposeful, more measured, more life-giving for your legacy, which will outstrip your tenure as dean, even as the fourth longest to serve under that title since it was first used here in 1949. Both of you love art and minister through the arts in different and complementary ways, as the current exhibitions in the foyer attest. And so here is a small and sacramental token of our affection and gratitude, which, as you'll see, is earmarked for you to purchase a piece of Indigenous artwork from the country to which Cathy has welcomed us this afternoon. In giving it to you on behalf of a thankful diocese, let me also pray over you. Susanna, Nikolai, may Blessed Mary, St. Paul and all the saints pray for you. May St. Michael and his holy angels surround and defend you on every side. May the cross of Christ be always set before you for your healing and wholeness. And the blessing of God most gracious, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let's show our prayerful appreciation for Suzanne. <laughs> and they're all waiting on Zoom. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you, Bishop Richard, for those very kind words, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. And, and uh, Bishop Richard is absolutely right. Susanna and I couldn't be more delighted that this is the occasion upon which the first of our First Nation peoples is uh, elected as, de uh, as um, canon of this cathedral. I think it, it's a remarkable occasion and one that I, I greatly value. And Nikki Moffat, who is a, a good friend of mine, whom I will not always um, thank for being a very close uh, advisor, as it were, uh, to First Nation things. Uh, I want to deepen that relationship with him and obviously with you. So when I suggested to Susanna in my very short response that I would begin, farewell, goodbye, au vides and adieu, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Susanna, unfortunately, well, fortunately, was not so far away from me uh, that she had to frown. Uh, she was very close to me and made her feelings known. <laughs> but you see, I've done it anyway. And as you know, after 20 years of being together as a team, she does it with such graciousness and, and acquiescence. <laughs> 
Now, I've deliberately made this uh, very, very short so that you don't all shuffle around in your seats here and in streamland. Saying goodbye is definitely not my favorite thing. It's one of those necessaries. I always feel very sad, not something I can help, I'm afraid, so you have to bear with me. To say that we have been together through much is a gross understatement. To name the times that we have lived through together, unprecedented and historic, has become, would you believe it, a cliché. So what can I say of these five years, and particularly these last two years? I just say three things. We must continue to undergo, continue to overcome, and continue to become something better than we were before. To undergo and keep on undergoing because life is relentless in the challenges it throws to at us. It is an eternal return of the same. It is all about Job's persistence in integrity towards our First Nation peoples, towards ourselves, towards one another. It is either that or caving in and going under and becoming a lesser person to overcome and keep on overcoming because that is our vocation, our commissioning from the one Jesus who himself overcame and calls us to do the same. To become and keep on becoming because we are better than our worst moments. Because it's not who we are, but it is what we do. This afternoon, I feel like my friends Friedrich and René, who have accompanied me in this marathon of a PhD I'm completing, is actually being done on your watch, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ. On your watch. Before we can say goodbye to the deanery and the cathedral, I shall be surrounded by boxes trying to connect with someone in Wales. So I leave you with René and Friedrich's words. They are the last words of my thesis and I hope that they will be words that will fortify us all and gladden our hearts. So I begin with René Girard writing the encouragement of the German poet Friedrich Hölderlin he offers this assurance to us all in these difficult times. Where danger threatens, that which saves from it also grows. And Friedrich Nietzsche, this is my favorite quotation, it's so beautiful. On this perfect day, on this perfect day, when everything is ripening, and not only the grape turns brown, the eye of the sun just fell upon my life. I look forward, I look backward, and never saw so many good things at once. I do not want to wage war against what is ugly. I do not want to accuse those who accuse. Looking away shall be my only negation someday I wish to be only a yes-sayer. And how could we finish without mentioning Jesus? And this admonition from Jesus of Nazareth, son of humanity, son of God, I've told you all this so that trusting me, you'll be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace, in this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart. I have conquered the world. Thank you, St. Paul's. Thank you, Diocese of Gippsland. Thank you, Bishop Richard. Thank you all. I carry you all in my heart.
can you speak after that? <laughs> Except to echo my thanks to all of you. It's been a real privilege to serve in this diocese, to serve with each one of you as people of God. It's been a privilege to work with you, Bishop Richard, in our weekly recording of services and various meetings. It's been a privilege and I have learnt a lot. I came to Gippsland with the symbol of pomegranates. Pomegranates in Western Australia in my discerning, pomegranates in the cathedral when I walked in, pomegranates at Bishop's Court while I was waiting for my interview, and then pomegranates when I arrived from Ken Parker. Pomegranates, for me, a symbol of fecundity, of fruitfulness of life with the cross at the centre. On my first week here in Sale, a friend who is a Uniting Church minister from Canberra gave us a pomegranate shrub, which we planted in a pot at the deanery. It had its first fruit this year. Seeds take time to germinate. Plants take time to grow and flower and fruit. And each one of us has a part in their growing by God's grace. Who knows what is our legacy, what we will leave behind, but we have planted seeds and watered them alongside each one of you. And it has been a privilege to be here. I guess Gippsland has always been a part of my life. I've always known that my great-grandfather was the first bishop of Gippsland and that my grandfather grew up here. I've been here for many special occasions over the years. I remember being chaplain at a youth synod a long time ago. But it's only been in this past five years or so that I have lived here and experienced the landscapes and people. I've loved walking around the lakes in sail each morning, walking along the beach at Sea Spray, staying at the Abbey, driving through tall forest trees, hiking at Tarabulga and experiencing the Streslekis as well as enjoying different eateries around the place and wineries. I've enjoyed meeting people around the diocese, especially at synod and ordinations and at our daily evening prayer and morning meditation. It's wonderful to pray daily with people from around the diocese and beyond. Prayer in community bookends my day. It's been a privilege but not always a pleasure, to serve as a member of a number of boards and chapters and to work with the community to explore how we keep the spirit of 123 alive in our community and to work with ecumenical colleagues like Jenny for the good of our community in prayer and ritual. It's been a rich time here with art exhibitions and quiet days in galleries and gardens, with retreats and studies and worships and interplay. It's been very special in these past few years to extend our reach beyond the diocese with talks and workshops and prayer afternoons on Zoom. We will miss you and we will miss this place. And I'm just so humbled at your gift to us, how special and apt. And I look forward to working with some people to find out what it is that we take with us of this place and of, this, of her people. Thank you all for your welcome, for your collegiality, for your support and love and prayer. You continue in our hearts. Thank you. So you can't have a service without announcements. Um, we, 
we have made some little snack boxes for you to take with you. They're in the hall. Please collect one after the service to take with you on your journey. Um, sadly, we can't eat and drink too much here, but you may get a cuppa or a glass of water, but there's some snack boxes to, for you to take with you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you again, Susanna, Nikolai. Would you please stand? Thank you to everyone who's led our praises and our prayers this evening and worked so hard behind the scenes to make this a wonderful occasion, if bittersweet, for our diocesan family. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.